Okay, so since I started making videos about how to learn Japanese with an immersion method, by far the thing I've been asked the most is, how do, how I, do use I make Anki? my own Can you make a tutorial on Anki? What is the best? I'm not Anki really sure how to use. I don't really know how to use. Can you Anki? please I don't know make a video on? Anki. Okay, I'm finally making a video about Anki. So for any of the uninitiated, what is this Anki thing you've probably heard about a few times? It's a way of life. Some might say it's a way of being. Yeah, it's actually just a flashcard program that lets you memorize words really fast. I think it's probably safe to say that I wouldn't have learned Japanese to the level that I have without it, or at least it would have been a lot slower, and honestly I don't really think it would be an understatement to say that Anki is the single best tool you could ever use to aid in language learning if you use it correctly. But that's the thing, you have to use it correctly, which is what I'm going to talk about in this video. So this video is going to be split into two main parts, the first of which I'm going to spend talking about the benefits of Anki, how you should be using it, and what role it plays in the bigger picture of language learning. The second part of the video will focus more on how to actually set up Anki, how to start using it, and what decks, add-ons, and extensions that I recommend getting. Okay, so the first thing that I want to make very clear is that Anki is not a substitute for language exposure. Everything that I explain here is with the premise that you're still spending multiple hours a day with your target language. This is called immersion. Anki is meant to be used as a supplement, not as the main mechanism for which you're going to acquire the language, so if you're spending all of your time doing flashcards, then you're not going to see the benefits that I describe in this video. Okay, so what is the role of Anki? It's actually really simple, it's just memorizing words. Not knowing enough words is probably the biggest bottleneck in learning a language, at least to a certain point, and you could say that there's a pretty large correlation between the amount of words that you know and how comfortable you are at understanding your target language. This is especially true to beginners, as the words you're learning are usually extremely common and are used all the time, meaning that the more words you learn, the faster you're going to improve. With this concept in mind, it shouldn't be a surprise that if you're attempting to grow your ability in a foreign language that you're still not very comfortable in, learning words should be one of your highest priorities. Anki lets you do this very quickly and very efficiently. Unlike normal flashcard programs, Anki is what's called an SRS, meaning Spaced Repetition System. This essentially just means that there's an algorithm that will look at how you grade your cards, and then determine how easy or difficult it thinks they are for you, setting an interval for which that card should show up next for max efficiency. Let's say I wanted to learn the word inu in Japanese. I add it to my deck, see it once, and then think, oh yeah, that means dog, and then press the good button. This will push the card off until tomorrow. I'm editing this video right now, and I forgot to say that you probably shouldn't use the easy or hard buttons. They cause really big deviations in how your cards are going to be scheduled, so you're going to want to stick to the good or again button most of the time. So the next day, the card appears again, and I remember the meaning, oh yeah, that means dog, so I press the good button. This changes the interval from one day to three days. So in three days, this word comes up again. If I press the good button, it's going to increase to one week, then to one month, then to three months, exponentially increasing the interval until you're either not going to come across this word again for a few years, or you're going to forget it in the interval resets. Doing this allows you to efficiently practice recalling words which are new to you, or that you struggle remembering, while also retaining all of the previous words that you've memorized and already know pretty well. I did this with Japanese to learn around 10 to 15 new words every single day for multiple years, to the point where now I have more than 15,000 cards in my deck, and the vast majority of them I have such a long interval on that I'm not going to see them for another year or two at least. I know from first-hand experience that if your goal is to build comprehension quickly and efficiently, then Anki is going to get you there. Now I mentioned earlier that Anki is only going to be beneficial to you if you use it correctly, but what does this actually mean? Well, it's kind of ironic actually. Using Anki correctly matters less about what you do inside of it, and more about what you do outside of it. If you're learning a language, you're going to make the most progress by spending tons of time listening to and reading content in that language. Anki is such a powerful tool because it's a catalyst for this process, not because it can replace it. No matter how many words you memorize or how many flashcards you do, if you don't spend meaningful time contacting the language that you're trying to learn, you're going to get nowhere. This is why you have so many people who, despite having memorized tons of words or grammar structures using textbooks, courses, or even Anki, they're still unable to understand or speak their target language. Immersing yourself in the language and getting real contact with it is the mechanism for which you're going to learn, so understanding this is crucial for getting the real benefits of using Anki. So what does all of this mean? Well, so far in this video I've used the phrase, memorizing words, but it's actually not that simple. The goal of Anki is not to memorize words so that you can perfectly understand them instantly or start using them right away in conversation, but rather to aid you in comprehension while you're still consuming actual content. You could say that Anki is here to help you understand, not to help you produce. Let's look at the Japanese word ki, which is a pretty abstract term that's used in a lot of phrases such as ki ga suru, ki ni naru, or ki ga meiru. 
Now you can memorize the dictionary definition of this word with Anki, getting a rough idea of what it means. Spirit, mind, heart, nature, disposition, intention, mind, will, motivation, mood, feeling. Yeah, do you see the problem? Languages don't always translate one to one. Concepts in your target language are not always going to line up with concepts that you know in your native language, so just memorizing the definition is not going to be enough to truly understand a lot of words. To actually understand the nuance of what this word means, you can't just go memorize the definition in Anki and say, alright, I learned this word. You have to acquire it by hearing it tons of different times in natural context, something which can only be done by spending a lot of time in the language itself. The actual role of Anki is to memorize the quick and rough meaning of a word so that you're able to recognize it when you're listening to or reading your target language, then picking up the true meaning through context. The goal is essentially just to combine the rough memorization of thousands of words and pair that with real language contact, allowing your brain to automatically notice patterns and draw connections to what you've consciously memorized and to what you're unconsciously processing when taking in the language. Alright, so you're probably thinking, okay, I get it, but where do we find words at? So the way that most people go about this is by using a pre-made deck to learn the most common one or two thousand words in order to build a base in the language. Then once they finish that, they start making their own cards with words that they find in their immersion. This is called mining. I'll go into specifics on what decks I recommend and how to set up a mining workflow later in the video. If you're a beginner, I would recommend sticking to 10 new words every day, as that's going to get you quick progress, but it's also not going to overwhelm you. If you're spending a lot of time immersing and you also have some extra time to put into Anki, you can do 15 or 20 a day instead, but it's important not to sacrifice your immersion time by spending too much time on Anki, so be careful if you're going to consider moving this number up. So there are two popular card types, each with their own distinct benefits. These are called vocab and sentence cards. Vocab cards have a single word on the front and a definition on the back, maybe an example sentence. Sentence cards have an entire sentence on the front and the definition for the single word that you wanted to learn while making that sentence on the back. Sentence cards make use of Stephen Krashen's concept of I plus one, which is essentially just when any given sentence is fully comprehensible except for one word or structure, and upon looking up the meaning of that unknown word or structure, you're able to grasp the meaning of the entire sentence as a whole. When you're a beginner, it's really difficult to find I plus one sentences out in the wild, so most people use starter decks that comprise of vocab cards. When you've completed a starter deck and start mining your own words to make cards out of, you can now decide whether to start making sentence cards or to keep making vocab cards. There are pros and cons to both, and it's really up to you which one you decide to do. The strength of vocab cards is that they're quick to rep and they're super easy to make. There are literally add-ons that let you make a card with one button click, and if you're lazy like me and don't really care that much about building a super strong connection with your cards, then this is probably the better option for you. Sentence cards, on the other hand, usually require a lot more manual effort to create and take a lot longer to rep, but because they include the context of which a word was found in, you're often going to understand the word a lot better than if you just memorize the definition by itself out of context. You can also just do a combination of both, as vocab cards are usually better for objects or things that can be directly translated with no ambiguity such as apple or cat, and sentence cards can be better for understanding words with more nuance. At the end of the day, you're going to learn words by acquiring them in immersion, not by repping them in Anki, so either card type works, it's just up to preference. Once you've hit a more intermediate or advanced level, you can start making monolingual cards which have the definition for the new word in the target language. This is good for words which don't really have an easy translation or can seem sort of vague. Look at this word. The English definition just says change or transition, which from the perspective of English is really vague and could honestly mean a million different things. When looking this word up in the Japanese dictionary, it roughly says, a word which designates how something has undergone change through the passage of time. You can see that the Japanese definition offers a lot more nuance, so if a word you learn has a really vague definition, you can try doing this. Okay, so let's talk about consistency. Using Anki successfully requires that you be consistent and show up every day. He says as he stares deep into his review heat map. Yeah, we're just not going to talk about that. If you miss a day of Anki, you're going to have to do double for the next day. If you miss a few days, then you might very well be spending more than an hour or two reviewing in order to catch up. This isn't ideal, because the more time you spend on Anki, the more time you're cutting into your actual immersion, so you're going to want to make a habit of showing up every day and not letting your reviews pile up too high. Now as you can see from my review heat map, I'm not very good at this, so I'll be the first to say it. Missing a day, two days, three days, even a week is not going to kill you. I've done it countless times. What's really important is that if you do miss a day or two, that you just pick back up and start where you left off. 
I see a lot of people who get really demotivated after missing a week or two of Anki and then look at all of the reviews that they have to do, and I'm here to tell you that it's not really that huge of a deal. If this happens to you, then just stop doing new cards for the time being and focus on catching yourself up. Even if it takes a few weeks of doing reviews every day to catch yourself up, you're gonna get there eventually, and it's not really that big of a deal, so don't sweat it too much. Okay, so that's basically the role of Anki. Now I'm gonna talk more specifically about decks, extensions, add-ons, etc. So the first thing that I want to bring up is that Anki actually came out with a new algorithm called FSRS a while back, which is way more advanced than the previous one, so I would highly recommend switching over to it as it could save you a lot of time. If you're using version 23.1 or above, then you should already have access to it. So we can go to our settings by clicking on this cogwheel next to our deck. If you're using multiple decks and want to have different settings for each one, then you need to make a new settings profile for each deck, which can be found at the top of the screen. Even if you only have one deck, it's probably good to do this just in case. So if you go to the bottom under advanced and check the FSRS box, you can use the new algorithm, which is what I recommend doing, and you should see this field called desired retention. By default, this number should be 90. You can mess around with this number if you want, but putting it higher than 90 will drastically increase your review count and make you spend a lot more time than it's probably worth, so I'd recommend setting this to 85. If you go to the daily limits section at the top, you can change the amount of new words that you want to see every day, which I recommend setting to 10 like I said earlier. You don't want any limit on the maximum reviews per day, so set this to 9999. If you go down a little bit under display order, you can change the order in which your new cards are going to appear, deciding if you want to mix them into your reviews, see them all first, or see them all last. I personally would recommend mixing them with your reviews, but it's all up to preference and doesn't really matter that much. If you go under lapses, you're going to see an option called leech action. Basically, if you fail a card too many times over a long period, Anki will tag it as a leech and suspend it. You can change this option to tag only if you don't want to suspend these cards, which is honestly up to personal preference. Everything else on this screen is either really self-explanatory or shouldn't need to be touched unless you know what you're doing, so I wouldn't recommend messing with anything else. If you want a reference, here's a screenshot of all of my settings. Okay, so I got a lot of questions asking what starter decks I recommend for Japanese. If you're not studying Japanese, then you can just go to AnkiWeb and search for a deck in the language that you want, and there's probably a few options for it. So there's actually a few starter decks for Japanese which are pretty good, so you shouldn't have any trouble finding one. A lot of the popular ones include the Tongo decks, the Paid Refold deck, the Core 2K6K deck, etc. But the one I personally would recommend is called the Kaishi 1.5K. Now as far as I can tell, this was created pretty recently, so I never actually used this deck, but from what I can tell, it's probably the cleanest and easiest to understand starter deck for Japanese that I've seen. So this is my recommendation, but honestly you'll be fine with whatever deck you choose. I'll leave a few options in the description. Okay, so next let's talk about add-ons. The first few add-ons that I want to mention are purely for fun and cosmetic, so you don't really have to add them, I just think they're kind of cool. The first of which is called Custom Background and Gear Icon. This is really simple, it just lets you change the background of Anki to whatever you want, just add a picture in and that can be your background. You can also upload a PNG and change the gear icon image. The second add-on that I like is Review Heatmap, which I mentioned a little bit ago. It basically just adds a chart to your main Anki screen with a square that gets filled for every day you do reviews. If you care about stuff like this, then it can be a good motivator and help keep you accountable, which clearly doesn't work on me as you can see. The next add-on that I like is called Anki Discord Integration, which basically just allows Discord to detect Anki as a game and set your status to show how many reviews you have left. If you watched my last video about Kanji, then you might have seen me talk about this add-on called Kanji Grid, which basically just looks at every card in your deck and gives you a large grid with all of the Kanji you know, which can also be sorted by various parameters to give you a sense of progression. As far as useful add-ons, the first is called Image Resizer. This add-on essentially just lets you set a desired size for any image you paste into Anki, allowing you to have consistent sizes and saving you tons of storage space. Okay, so next is by far the most useful add-on that I use, and it requires a little bit of work to set up, but it will allow you to make vocab cards within the click of one button. It also has the functionality to make sentence cards, but it's kind of buggy in my experience, so I don't really use it, but feel free to mess around with it if you want. This add-on is called Anki Connect, and it basically just lets you connect Anki to a pop-up dictionary in your browser like this, and make cards from unknown words super easily. First you're going to either need Yomi-chan or Yomi-tan, which are just pop-up dictionary Chrome extensions. 
Yomi-chan has been used for years as the best pop-up dictionary, but the creator recently stopped updating it, so its functionality is probably going to break sometime soon. Because of this, the extension was picked up by a new team and kept alive. This version is called Yomi-ten, and the functionality and UI are almost identical. Once you've installed the extension, you're going to want to download a dictionary. There's a large page with a bunch of good dictionaries listed on Yomi-ten's GitHub page, so go there and download one of these. There's also a pitch accent dictionary that you can add to your cards if you like, so I'll link that too. Once you import the dictionary that you want, enable it in Yomi-chan under the Dictionaries tab. Now we need to go match the fields on our pop-up dictionary with the ones on our Anki cards. You don't have to do this exactly how I do it if you already know what you're doing, but if you're unsure how it works then just follow what I do here. First you have to have a note type that you want to connect. Note types are essentially just a format for your Anki card. I put a deck in the description that you can download that has a single card in it with the note type. Once you import that into your Anki you can delete it instantly and you'll have the one that I use. Next you need to have a new Anki deck which you want your created cards to go into. I would recommend making this its own deck and then setting this and your starter deck as sub decks in a folder. Go back to the pop-up dictionary settings and select the Anki section on the left. Make sure Anki integration is enabled, then click configure card format. Select your deck and choose which note type for the model. If you downloaded the one that I put in the description then it's just called Japanese. It should automatically select the right values for the fields, but if not it should look like this, so just copy this right here. Now you should be able to create cards automatically by holding shift over a word and clicking the green plus symbol. The large symbol adds the word with kanji, the small one adds only the kana. Something else that I want to note real quick is that if you're using a variant of JM Dict, the audio for some of the more uncommon words will have incorrect pitch accent. Ikan. I've noticed that the dictionary is right 99% of the time, so if the audio and the pitch field don't line up, I would highly recommend deleting the audio and downloading a new one from Forvo, Ikan. which is just a website where people post native pronunciations of words. If you're still mining pretty common words, then this is probably not going to be that big of an issue for you, but I figured I'd mention it still because it's pretty good to know. You can just delete the existing audio field and then drag in the new pronunciation like this. If Forvo doesn't have a pronunciation for the word you're trying to add audio to, you can use TTS. Ikan. And I find that using TTS audio with the correct pitch accent is better than using native audio that doesn't have the correct pitch accent. Also, if you go to your pop-up dictionary settings, you can change the audio sources that you want your cards to take audio from if it's not already built into the dictionary. The dictionary you downloaded probably has audio already, and all of the ones that I linked do, but some of the words in there are not going to have audio as they're rare or they're slang or something like that. This is mostly just useful as a backup source for rare words which don't have audio built into the dictionary entry. And that's about it. With that, you should have a pretty good grasp on how to use Anki. If you're going to take anything away from this video, it should be that Anki is meant to help immersion, not to replace it, so don't go spending all of your time on flashcards. Lots of people talk about the best Anki setup or the best deck, etc, but none of that really matters that much as long as you're reliably learning words and spending a lot of time contacting the language. So honestly, just do whatever setup you feel like you can reliably do every day and that's going to be enough. Also, I just want to say thanks for all the support recently. These videos take a long time to script and edit, so I really appreciate all of the nice comments and people telling me that I helped them. If you have any questions, then feel free to put them in the comments. Anyways, that's about it. Catch you in the next one.